know, it's like, you know, if you ask me, hey, Storm, how's your marriage? And I say, well, it's sustainable. <laughs> yeah, how, how excited are you going to feel for me? <laughs> um, but if I say, oh, man, my, my, my marriage is revitalizing. Maria restores me on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, eh, different story, isn't it? You know, that's the kind of dialogue we need to have about our, the future of the world. You know, people, I'm sorry to say it, I've been a big fan of sustainability for a long time, but it pours people to death. You know, who wants to sustain a mess? Let's revitalize and restore. We've got a whole world full of restorable assets out there. Virtually everything we've been calling a problem is a restorable asset. Everything in the community that we've been thinking of is in the way of revitalization, is an ingredient of revitalization. Now, for infrastructure, for instance, there's a word that normally bores most uh, audiences, probably not this one, but you, know, you can restore infrastructure, renew infrastructure just for the reasons of safety, which is not a bad thing. But a lot of infrastructure is also historic. I took this picture of a bridge in Scotland when I was over there in 2003 that was just being restored, and took the, this picture again in 2008 when I was back over there. They didn't just restore safety or functionality. They were restoring heritage here. That, built, and that bridge is almost 150 years old. So there's a lot of overlap amongst these agendas. And it's not just a matter of demolition or restoration. Uh, it's also reuse. In Chattanooga, they had this horse-drawn carriage bridge from the 1800s. And they were about to demolish it because there's no way to make it strong enough for cars. And somebody had the bright idea, well, pff, what about pedestrians and bicycles? It's plenty strong enough for that. And now it's one of the major community assets. Chattanooga has a, has a portion of the city on both sides of the river. This connects them beautifully. You know, and they actually hold community parties on here at sunset on a regular basis. They used to have the world's longest pedestrian bridge. Uh, Poughkeepsie took a look at that Chattanooga bridge and said, we can do better. We've got a rail bridge over the Hudson River. And uh, that's now the world's largest pedestrian bridge. Just a matter of reuse. Cost almost nothing to convert that to a pedestrian bridge. But it's a huge amenity. You know, we can ignore our infrastructure problems at our peril. You know, Macau was growing beautifully for a long time there, and all of a sudden people realized the infrastructure was falling apart, and only investors started pulling out, and Macau went into decline. Not because the casinos, there's anything wrong with the casinos, but it's the infrastructure that scared people. <clears throat> infrastructure is the heart, at the heart, of a tremendous number of community revitalization efforts. So that's, uh, it, it's, it, it's really, key to connectivity, you could say. You know, if a community isn't properly connected and if things don't flow properly, you're probably not going to have a revitalized community. So speaking of connectivity, that's the next big thing. Uh, number two is it's not enough just to base our economic growth on renewing our assets. We've got to connect them properly because that's where the efficiencies and the synergies come from. If you want to get a bigger bang for your buck, restore the natural environment, the built environment, the socioeconomic environment together. The trouble is, we're set up to do everything in silos. Those are the infrastructure people, those are the brownfield people, those are the heritage people, they're the ones who take care of the frogs. You know, and you know, you, you know, community is a complex living system. You can't treat it like an automobile engine where this guy specializes in valves and that guy does the crankshaft. 